today's video, it's a very quick change of plan as we failed once again. It's becoming a bit of a habit these days, so instead we'll bring you a lofty lighthouse with shed loads of steps, a dingly dell and some beautiful beaches. That's right, chase the weather kids. If you don't know us, I'm Rachel and he's Wills and we are Postcard and a Pint. So how's your Welsh adventure going today? Well, Fails and Wales is pretty much becoming, I don't know, a six-part mini-series for Postcard and a Pint. We had a lovely vlog planned for you today. We were off to Bardsey Island, the end of the Pilgrim's Trail. We were going to wander this beautiful island, get some gorgeous drone shots. But no, we even followed the weather app to get the best day of the week. And then what happens this morning? This happens. Colin Zimmer, Cosmic Cook, essentially. It's Colin here at the boat service for Bardsey Island. If you book the day trip for us for today... Uh, which I think is the 10th of August, uh, Thursday. I'm afraid they're going to be cancelled. Cheers, Colin. I know safety first and all that, and we wouldn't want to be stranded there, but now what? So here we are now in the Sleen Peninsula on a beautiful day with absolutely no plans at all. We've driven to Abasoch because it's the first place we could get any 4G to kind of see what we could do. We looked at a boat trip from here, but they're all very, very rich and posh in Abasoch and it's too expensive. So we'll get back to you when we've had a look on the internet and decided what we're going to do today. What to do when you've failed in Wales. OK, internet trawled and we're off to Anglesey. We've got loads of things on Anglesey we've never seen before. There's top things to do. We're going to see how many we can fit in. Come and join us. Anglesey also tends to have better weather than the Sleen Peninsula. And if we can finish this video without rain, we'll take it as a win. Where have you got to, Wills? We're on the A55. It's almost gridlocked. It's not going well today. It soon sorted itself out and we were unleashed onto Anglesey and our first stop. Now, do tell us where you are, please, Rach. We've arrived at South Stack and we're going to take a tour of the lighthouse, which sounds fun. The jumpers are on. Way in the distance over there is Bardi, where we should have been. Look at the weather. And here we are. OK, so it's not a lot better weather where we are, but at least it's dry. The South Stack Lighthouse is built on the summit of a small island off the northwest coast of Anglesey. That's good news. Something today is going right. The cliffs down to the lighthouse are incredibly steep and seem to be popular with rock climbers, nutters. It's incredibly beautiful and picturesque. But a word of warning, don't do this if you don't like steps. There are 406 steps all the way down and you know what that means? Yep, there's 406 up too. When you finally descended 406 steps, you cross over a small bridge to access the island. Legs looking forward to the way back up, Rach? Nope. This lighthouse was designed by Daniel Alexander and built by Trinity House in 1809. It's 28 metres high and today we're going on a tour of it. It's £9.50 for adults, £4 for children and £7.50 for concessions. You start your tour waiting on the ground floor. Then it's off to this room. This is the former lighthouse engine room. This lighthouse went automatic in 1984 and is now controlled from Essex, 300 miles away. Did someone say more steps? Yes, please. If the 406 to get here wasn't enough for you, you get another 108 up to the top. Made it. Almost. Spoiler alert, the last little bit is more like a ladder. Now we've made it, and what a view. Where are you, Rach? I'm in a lighthouse. You certainly are. The main light here is visible to vessels for 28 miles. The lighthouse was designed to allow safe passage for ships on the treacherous Dublin-Hollyhead-Liverpool route. It provides the first beacon along the northern coast of Anglesey for eastbound ships. It's quite a piece of engineering. Building a tower of this height on a rock below steep cliffs surrounded by rough seas in 1808, what an incredible achievement. The lamp you see here today was installed in 1999. We enjoyed the views and spotting the wildlife from up here. Then, it was time to start our descent of the lighthouse. To think that families once lived here and their kids went to school on the mainland. Those kids must have been fit as fleas. Southstack Lighthouse is said to be one of the spookiest buildings in Britain. It is said to be haunted by the ghost of Jack Jones, the lighthouse keeper who was killed in 1859 as he struggled to reach the lighthouse in order to warn ships of an impending storm. Does that make you scared, Wills? We've just been up there. Obviously not. Thoughts, Rach? That was really cool. Who needs Bardsey Island? Who indeed? Although I don't think Bardsey Island has 406 steps down and up. What have you found now, Rach? This handily carved out rocky seat 
was used by Queen Victoria before she was queen. She was princess. She came here to visit the lighthouse. She walked from a boat up the steps and sat here and gazed at the lighthouse, as I shall do now. How positively regal. Too many steps. <laughs> Poor Wills, how's it going? I can't even talk. Never mind walk. So that's 1,028 steps today so far. But we want more. We're on our way down to Eshlin's Tower, or Ellen's Tower. No idea who she is, but she's got a pretty square white tower. Let's go take a look. Ooh, watch yourself on those steps, Rach. I think you've done a few too many steps today. So Ellen's Tower was built between 1820 and 1850. Once a summer house for the Stanley family, it is now an RSPB information centre, where you can look out at all the wildlife. On jellied legs, we finally made it back to the main visitor centre, where there was a seal, comedy cards with birds on, puffins galore, and of course, Christmas cards. Cheers, Southstack! Now moving on. We've come into Slangebni now, we're going to check out the Dingle Nature Reserve. We found it on things to do in Anglesey, so we thought, let's check it out. We're absolutely starving, so we're going to try and get some food. And it is very naturey, because we've just seen a butterfly, and randomly, it's summer again in Wales. That's beautiful, and I bet it's raining on Bardsey Island anyway. Slangevny is Anglesey's county town and principal administrative centre, and seems to have a lot of eating establishments that are closed. And this work of art showing history flowing in all directions. Thoughts? Personally, I think it's a metaphor for people trying to find food in Slangevny. You look here, you can look here, you can look here, you can look here. You won't find any. Someone's hungry. Thank the Lord for the coffee hut. And it has some great art inside. Looking good. A sharing platter for two should put us right. Those sausage rolls were divine. Thanks, Coffee Hut, we're ready to tackle the dingle. We'll come back and explore the town another day. But now it's on to nature and green spaces. Yep, you both need that. Here's hoping we spot a red squirrel and a kingfisher. The dingle is a nature reserve that covers 25 acres, with the river Kefni running through it. Our satnav had struggled to find it, so we recommend the what three words, madder, cookie, manage. But we finally found the dingle and we've just started our little wander through, don't know how big it is. It's really pretty and peaceful considering it's right on the side of a town. So we got stuck in. Another name for the dingle is Nant Apandi, meaning brook of the fulling mill. This refers to an old wool processing plant situated upstream. It's really serene and peaceful, and you can't hear the town nearby at all. Most of the reserve is ancient woodland. It has been enhanced through community involvement, working in partnership and grant aid. We were lucky that we had it pretty much to ourselves. There is a boardwalk that winds its way along the Kefni. A cute family of ducks. We really wanted to spot a kingfisher, as they are here in the dingle. Sadly, it wasn't to be. But, really impressed with this. I thought this was going to be like a little small area, but we've been walking for ages and it's really beautiful and really tranquil. Highly recommend this one. We had also wanted to spot a red squirrel, as they are present here too. But we had to make do with a red robin. He was cute. We really enjoyed our time here, walking off lunch, and this reserve is free as well bonus. Moving on once again, and it's a trip down memory lane for Wills. Wills spent many a summer's day on Anglesey. Tell us where we are, lad. We've just come down to Red Wharf Bay. Now, I used to spend a lot of time down here as a kid. Not so much here, more Bentlough, which we're hopefully going to go to in a minute. But that house we just showed you a minute ago, that used to belong to my great auntie. And um, good memories. Miss you, Auntie Gwyn but we can't believe it's the middle of August. I know it was forecast to be not such a great day, but it's a beautiful day. There's hardly anybody here. All the more beach for us and time to get out the drone. This is a stunning beach and the bay is a designated nature reserve that attracts an abundance of bird life. There are waders and waterfowl, such as purple sandpipers, curlew, shellduck and dunlin. It's a twitcher's paradise. But it's time to leave. Now we're off to Benzlech Beach. A short drive north brings you to Benzlech Beach and Wills is so excited to be here. Take it away, lad. And this is Benzlech Beach, a bit busier than Red Wharf. 
and the beach where the young Wills built many a sandcastle, dug many a hole and ate many an ice cream. It was brilliant to see this beach busy and being enjoyed. She's happy. The Sheen Peninsula weather did look like it was coming in, so we headed off. But for a day that didn't start off too well, it's gone really well. We've got one more thing to do. We're going to go try and find a railway station. What does that say? Come again? I said, That's easy for you to say. Most people call it Slamvai PG, but everyone comes here to take a photo of the railway sign, as Slamvai PG has the longest place name in Europe. It's still a working station and has a massive gift shop right next door. It even shows you what the ridiculously long place name means in English. Now you two have been on the road for ages. Surely it's time to go home. Well, we managed to get onto the station and show you the name, which is brilliant. Unfortunately, the gift shop had just closed and it's a brilliant gift shop. The one is massive. It's on the coach day trip stop. It's got sheep and dragon for days, but we do want to come back here and we want to find all the locations for the translation. So one day we will do that video and we'll do this place in more detail. But for now, it looks like winter's almost back in Wales. It's time to head home for a pint. We're back and the day turned out all right. It was all right, wasn't it? I'm not going to lie, I was gutted. Yeah. I've been looking forward to going to Bardsey for so long. Mm. And we even looked at the weather forecast. We'd watched a load of videos yeah, about it. We'd done our research for once. I got all my facts written down in my book for once. I know. And then... It was a lovely day, well, it was a mixed day, was mixed. but there was a chance of wind in the afternoon and old Colin didn't want to risk it. We kind of had an idea yeah. it might have might yeah. be cancelled because we got a phone call or a message, message the, night, the before. night before saying, Check. make sure your phone at eight o'clock to find out. So we did. So we and, did. Well, anyway, it turned out all right. Yeah, apparently I have been to South Stack many moons ago when I was an ickle kid. And you were so ungrateful you don't even remember it. I know. I know. <laughs> never mind. Oh, my but, legs. Oh, I bet your legs didn't hurt that much when you were a little kid. I couldn't kid. talk at the top of oh, Both of us, the next day woke up, our legs were like jelly. They were. But it's a good workout. Anyway. It's a, all the fellas that work there I know. look like they're like 70 plus and they jog up and jog down every day. I don't day. think they jog. No, maybe they don't jog, but they no. do that twice a day. But they anyway. anyway. Um, then, yeah, Clangevney was lovely. The little... <laughs> mm, so it was lovely. The it was dingle, short. the park was The lovely. dingle was beautiful, yeah. wasn't it? But Clangaffney was quite short. And the beaches. Yep. Beaches were really nice. Yeah. Red Dwarf. I, uh, Red Dwarf. Red Wharf. Yeah. I haven't been there for donkey's years. I didn't used to spend a lot of time there, but Ben Slough used to spend a lot of time there as a and kid. Even though Do you like the photos? Quite busy. We have a little fat kid with yeah. <laughs> sand in my mouth. Even though it was quite busy, it was so lovely to see the British seaside or the Welsh seaside being used. Yeah. Because so often the weather's shocking and you go there and you're like, oh, this would be so amazing. So that was really, really nice, even though it was busy. Yep. And then we went to the railway station. Yeah, we did. And we're going to make a longer video of there another day. Yeah. Another fun. day. Anyway. That's enough for now. I think if you'd like this video, we would be very grateful. If you'd hit that button and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to find out other things we're doing yep. and to see more daft videos and like these. I'm going to say this now. Go on. Follow us on Instagram this Ooh. week because we're going away Ooh. and you might get some real time stuff because we're normally rubbish. Yeah, on postcard the pint on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. And if we are any good or have any internet. Oh, we'll do a live, shall we? Will we? Yeah. Okay, we might do a live. Yeah. So, as we say in Postcard and a Pint, cheers, cheers to, to the, the good, good times. times. Don't tell anyone, but I've got that Welsh railway station tattooed on my. What? Real? Arr.